Hi guys, so in this video lecture we are going to start room database with Kotlin. Okay, so what is the room database? So the room database is a persistent library that is part of the Jetpack component. So with the help of room database, we can work very easily with SQLite database and we can avoid the bipolar code. Plus there's a one more advantage of room database is then compile time query checking is there. Okay, so let us start with integration of room database in Kotlin. So first of all, we have to add the Gradle plugins for room database plus coroutines. Okay. So we have to copy this dependency and paste in our Gradle section. Okay. So this is the library for the coroutines and this is the library for room database. So after the adding the library, we have to add the plugins for KAPT. So just copy this plugins and go to the Gradle and paste it here. So this is sync here. Now uh, the room database consists of three parts. The first part is entity where we can define our table. The second is DAO is a database access object where we can write our queries to perform the insertion, deletion, update this kind of operation we can perform then last is the database where we can define our entities and we can create a one abstract method that return the DAO object and one method we have defined there that return the database object okay so let's perform each action one by one so first we have to create the entity class so we have to create one class that name is student okay and we'll create this class as a data class and annotation is entity and you can define here the name of table is student okay then in the constructor we have to define primary key id int okay next we have to define you can initialize zero here then we have to define a column info so here we have defined the column name so the name of column is first name okay and where what types of uh, there is a string okay and next we have to define column is last name and then last is address okay so our entity is created now now we have to create a one a DAO object so let's go to the uh, our git repository create a one DAO object here go to the Kotlin provide the name here and this will be as interface okay and here we have to write our all insertion and deletion queries so we just copy here okay so we are using the query annotation to write the query the first query is select star from student table so it will give the list of student that present in our student table the second is delete so delete annotation is used to delete the record from your our database so here we are going to delete the student record from our student database okay then insert is one more query is there so if you want to perform the insertion operation okay the now last is we have to create the database okay so just go to the new kotlin file and define the database here so go to the class this class will be abstract class and when we are creating the database class there is a some rule is there we have to define all the entities in a database class with the help of at the rate database annotation then second is we have to provide the function that will be abstract function and that function will be written the our dao object and the last is we have to provide the instance of our database okay so our database is just copy the syntax here okay and our version is one
so our version is one here okay now we have to provide all the informations like we have to okay one more thing is there we have to extend room database okay so we just copy these things and paste it here okay so our extend room database is completed we have to define its abstract class here the rest of the things is fine okay so here we have to define our database name is here so the room dot uh, database builder we have to provide the context then our database class and the database name and last is build so it will be generate our database object okay so anything error here okay fine now let's go to the activity section here we have to create the object of our database db instance equal to student database dot get this we have to pass the context here okay the now the next thing is we have to perform all this operation into the background okay so for that one we have to use the global scope dot launch and here we are creating the our student object for our first entry and here in the constructor we have to provide the first name last name here and address okay so now let's find and we have to insert this into the our database so db instance dot get da object and insert query we have to perform to insertion okay so here sorry here we have to check the null safety the last is once the insertion is completed so if you want to check the record we have uh, one more query is there that is called get student record so for that one we have to create the list is student list that will be writ uh, written type as list so db instance dot get object then get load so this method will return all the student record okay now we want to execute this record into the log file students and here we have to return this list okay that's fine so go to the android emulator clear so the gradle is running here so once the gradle will run completed it will install your application in your emulator okay so gradle is completed it's given one error okay so that error is okay so our database object will be as a dao type okay so we have to define here dao and again run this code So code is I think compiled. 
so we are going to uh, we have the fix the bug and we are going to run and we have uh, to uh, we have did a very little bit change here in the student class uh, primary key auto generate equal to true so every time whenever the new entry will be generated it will be create a new id for that entry so let's execute this one so first check okay so here lock it the new entry is added in our database that is one is a b and india now we are going to change in our main activity then we will add this name ravi then sharma and india okay so once we execute uh, again run a new entry will be created at that entry will be first is abhishek and second will be ravi sharma so we can see here the student first entry is abhishek second entry is ravi sharma this is possible because we have a primary key is auto generate true so the first id is defined for abhishek and second id is defined for ravi so in next video we are going to learn how to update the db suppose example if you launch your application and you want to update your database version because you have uh, modify your database table so how you will perform these things so we will learn in our next video so thank you guys keep watching